Hey friends, Amanda here, Bare Bones Living, and welcome back. Uh, today I was going to show you guys my garden at its current state, a quote unquote garden tour, uh, show you what's growing, show you what I'm in the process of, and just kind of bring you into our real life situation that we have here. This is not the garden tour that I wanted to show you. Everything's not perfect, but again, that's life. And I just wanted to show you where we're at today and things that are going great, things that aren't doing so well, and things that I'm still planning, actually. And also during this little session that I have here, while well, I get a moment that my boys, all three, are actually taking a nap. I'm actually going to be trying to plant some more things because my garden is ever changing, it's ever growing, and I'm always starting new things, and that's just how this whole gardening season has kind of wound up for me. So. I thought I would bring you guys along with me and we'll see what we get done and I'll give you an update on what you guys have seen before and show you some new stuff too. I might as well start at the, the front, quote unquote, and this is the entrance way for our garden. We did... Uh, fence it off. You can see this T-post here and then this T-post, where's that? This T-post right here. Those are our uh, kind of end points. This other T-post here is acting as like my door. <laughs> um, and it's just T-posts and uh, two inch hardware cloth or not hardware cloth uh, chicken wire and so I just take that take this one and stretch it across and stick it down behind this cinder block here and that's kind of acting as my door for the time being uh, you can see that there's a lot of grass kind of growing in here but I'll give you a little overview real quick on this side is my in-ground garden and I started, this was my, this strip here that has the straw on it was my first uh, bed that I created here. And then just to the side of that, there, you don't see any straw. That's, uh, there's a layer of um, leaves there. That's kind of where I stopped with the straw, and that's from what I had at the time. All the straw that I had at the time. Um, and I'm just kind of working my way this way with in-ground beds. I just started this bed right here that has some, that, that's actually grass clippings that you see there. And then that dirt back there is bare. And then... I have two tarps down trying to extend that way. And then on this side, I have my garden beds that I just showed you guys making. And then you'll, if you can see, there is a little like ring around the border of the garden on both sides. I think you can see it here as well. It just rims the side all the way up. And that is, I think you can see right in here, those are uh, zinnias. And there's some purple ones coming up down there. I scattered a bunch of seeds. These zinnias that you see that are actually bloomed, I bought as starts. Um, that's why they have blossoms on them. And then I spread a bunch of wildflowers and zinnias and bachelor's button and borage and all sorts of 
I, I think I put some calendula in there. I started all kinds of seeds and they're just now coming up. So there's nothing really to show you on that. Everything needs to be weeded and mulched, but that's for another day and when I have more time. And then I did the same thing over here. This has my chamomile starts that I started, a couple chamomile or uh, calendula plants that I started. Uh, and I think like a, there's like a marigold over here and a marigold over there. Uh, so just a bunch of random seeds that I threw down and I didn't really like purposefully plant them. Just wanted to see if they would pop up and give us some color and something to look at in the time being. So now starting in my actual first bed here, you'll see my potato plants all growing here. And I thought, I can't actually see what you guys are seeing. There we go. We'll lower you down a little bit. There we go. I thought that I had planted my potatoes to back, back to here. So I didn't plant anything in this spot right here. <laughs> Cause I thought there was potatoes under there, but until they came up, I didn't, I couldn't tell. So nothing is actually planted here. And then I have melons back behind there. But these, all these potatoes that you see here are a mix of Yukon, uh, some red potatoes, red Norland potatoes, and Kennebec potatoes. And those are finally starting to come up and I have to mound up some more straw on that. And then working down the bed this way, so the potatoes are up there. Then in front of the potatoes, all of this is sweet potatoes. And that comes from here all the way through these leaves and it stops at this grass line here. And these are all sweet potatoes. Most of these, like these are all purple sweet potatoes. And these are the sweet potatoes that I started from the potatoes that I bought from the store. The purple potatoes were all from Azure. Then I bought a white sweet potato from Azure. And then I had one orange sweet potato from the store. So this is all purple potatoes, purple sweet potatoes. And then I think about right here is the white and orange sweet potatoes. Then starting from the back again as a reference point, that's where the regular like Kennebec and Yukon potatoes are back there. Then next to that along the back fence line to there, there's a honey nut squash and butternut squash along the back. And these are all this bed here from here to there. And then coming forward here, this is all melons and squash that are just now starting to come up. And that comes all the way to here and fills in up here. So this is my honeydew melon. And I can see that there's one little guy starting to poke out there. So that's exciting. And then next door to that is a moon and stars. And I can see again, there's a little, little guy poking through there. Behind that, I planted some Kajari melons that are poking up here. I planted one there too. Over here is a Jubilee watermelon that I don't see anything popping up yet.
This is a, these are sugar pie uh, pumpkins. And then this is a Cinderella pumpkin, or it's also called like, I'll put the name at the bottom because I'm gonna totally butcher it. It's a very fancy name. And then back here, the butternut, I see some popping up there. And a little bit popping up here. And this honey nut, I see those ones popping up there and there. And I don't think I got this cantaloupe. There's a couple popping up there. Then back in this corner here, I decided to try the Three Sisters gardening. Um, and I was inspired by Destiny from Dirt Road Destiny to do the Three Sisters gardening. So I decided to give it a try. And so I built up these little mounds. And I've, I've never grown Three Sisters. I've never tried any of this before. But basically you can see I built up this mound here and then I created a crater on the inside and I planted corn in four corners. Corners of a circle, right? <laughs> um, I planted four corn in each of my mounds and you can see the four coming up there. I only see three coming up over here. I see the one here, there and there. And then turn around here. There's four coming up here. And again, only three coming up here. And the idea is you plant the four, the four corn, and then, uh, I don't remember if it was two weeks or three weeks later, you come back and you put runner beans in here. So that's one of the things that I have to do today is put in the runner beans. So I think it's two weeks. Two weeks ago I planted these corn. Then you plant your runner beans to grow up along the stalks of the corn. You want to give the, the corn a head start. And now I started this Three Sisters super late, so this is probably not going to work, but I figure I'd give it a shot. So now they've been able to sprout and grow up a little bit. By the time the beans start to grow runners, the corn should be grown enough that they can support the runners. And then the third sister is squash. And I started all this squash over here and I'm going to just like let it ramble. You're supposed to, the squash is supposed to be the last thing that you start, but I wanted to get these started since I was starting this so late. Um, so that's why I planted them over there and I'm gonna let them run and I'm gonna train them to come this way. And the squash acts as like a ground cover. So I'm gonna trail it this way and let it come over these mounds as a ground cover. And the two gardens that have the four that came up the four corn that came up are both the same variety. Um, I think that's the bantam corn that I got from Nina and Boyce at uh, Rooted in Texas, they sent me. And then I think I got a, I got a sweet, I think this one's sweet corn that I got in a maybe that was, I don't know where I got those, the sweet corn. But then this one is the strawberry corn that I got 
uh, from David Gray in the Old Ways Gardening and Prepping Seed Swap. So I'm excited to see all of them grow. I did think it was kind of interesting that the bantam corn is the only thing that all four of them sprouted. 100% of the bantam corn that was planted sprouted, so that was cool. And then coming down from the three sisters bed and down this way, the rest of this is a second planting of sweet potatoes. Those uh, sweet potatoes that I let grow just a little bit longer. This was all of them. So this is my second planting of sweet potatoes. As far as this garden bed goes, you can see that I have cardboard laid down. Um, the only true no-till portion of my garden is that original potato patch where all the regular starchy potatoes are. Uh, maybe a little bit this way too. That is the only area that is true no dig. Did nothing to just laid the cardboard down on top of our grass. Um, the rest of it we did till up at one point doesn't really look like it, but we did. Um, and then we laid down the cardboard. Then on top of the cardboard is uh, cow manure and hay and just dirt that my neighbor let me take from raising her to meat cows. She had scraped it all together, so it was like a mix of topsoil, manure, uh, straw, things like that. And it had been sitting uh, since January. So I took that and put it on top of the cardboard. And then I put leaves on top of that and then straw on top of that. So cardboard, manure, soil, mixture, lots of leaves, and that's what you see here is just all the leaves sitting on top of it, and I haven't put the straw yet on here. This is, didn't get leaves, this got grass clippings. So I need to come out here with straw and fill all the rest of this in. And then you'll see here that I have these tarps here. I just got sick of seeing all the grass. You can see that it's all bubbled up and stuff like that because I didn't cut the grass underneath it. I just plopped it on top and I'm hoping that it just strangles the grass slowly but surely. Um, it is working, but it's better than me seeing it for one because that's really frustrating because I did the tilling of this bed. It was hard work. And then I didn't have enough cardboard to bring manure over and all the things. And so it's just a frustration for me. So I would was getting very discouraged seeing all the grass. And I'm hoping that this slows down the grass and kills off the grass in some form or fashion. This bed here uh, that is half covered in grass clippings, I just started um, on Memorial Day on Monday. Um, and I, my dad brought over that morning, brought over some cardboard and I put it straight to use. And I took six loads of my Gorilla Cart with my zero turn. I learned how to drive my zero turn. I was really proud of myself. And that's what you see here. And then I got one load of grass clippings and covered it there. I need to go out and get more grass clippings. 
and cover it up. And this is actually also what I need to plant today. And this is gonna be for my cucumbers and maybe some peas and things that trellis that I don't have room for elsewhere. So then this is the other half here. And you can see I, I already have the, the trellises. I thought about going in between these garden beds, but it impeded on my cattle panels that I have up for my tomatoes. It bowed out too much, so it was like touching this cattle panel and I would have never been able to harvest my tomatoes. So that's why we had to come up with a plan B. But I did get my tomatoes planted. So I have four beds of tomatoes. And you can see that it is very, um, well, these two I don't have planted just yet because there is an ant's nest in here and I'm waiting to get some traps to put in there um, but everything else is planted I did run some raised bed irrigation tubing from Haas it was super easy to do um, other than the fact that I had already filled the beds that was that caused me some issue two of the beds were really easy and two of the beds were more difficult because I do have logs in the bottom of these and I wasn't thinking about that log placement when I placed them and so two of them were really easy to put the tubing through um, but there are four channels in each bed irrigation channels in each bed um, and then two of them had like a log right where I needed to get down and in so that was a struggle I did put cardboard under each of my beds then logs and um, big chunks of grass that I took out of my orchard when I planted that and I just filled the bottom with uh, junkier soil and then I got um, topsoil and mixed with mushroom compost to fill the top of my beds. So I guess we'll start over here and these three are Black Prince tomatoes and then these Four are called carbon tomatoes. So I'm planting seven plants per row uh, or per cattle panel, which might be a little close. Um, I ran out of space, so these are all my other starts that I'm planning on planting probably ar around the perimeter of my garden just so that they can continue to grow um, but for each bed each cattle panel has seven uh, tomato plants on it these are these three are a Blinken tomatoes and then these four are Paul Robeson tomatoes and then in front of that I planted a row of beans and I thought the beans were going to come up a lot faster than they did um, I was trying to use these beans as a trial for this soil but they didn't come up before I planted my tomatoes but they are coming up now and these in this bed are the burgundy bean, or I call them for the kids, the, the magic purple beans. They, the bean pods themselves are purple. 
but when you cook them, they turn green. So it's fun for kids. Uh, so I have a couple of them popping up, and I'm sure more will pop up. Then in this bed here, next bed, these three are black brandy wine. And then these four are the Dr. Weiches or Dr. Witchies or however you want to pronounce it, uh, yellow tomatoes. On this side, I actually don't remember. Oh yeah, these these three are pink ox heart, which are like a a plum shaped paste tomato. And next to that, I have four Amish paste plants. So these are all all seven of these are paste tomatoes. And in front of here. These beans are turtle beans, black turtle beans that are popping up. This bed gets a little questionable as to what is actually growing because I started running out of room. This is a single sweet cream cherry tomato or grape tomato. These two are champagne bubbles. These two are Tigrella, Tigrella, they're striped tomatoes. And these two, I believe, are Floridad tomatoes. On this side, there are two, I don't know if you can see this one. It's hiding around the corner there. There are two black strawberry grape tomatoes. Uh, and then these two down here are Sunray. And I think I have maybe another black strawberry. Or no, I have Sun Gold. These two are Sun. Maybe all three of these are Sun Gold. I'm not really sure. We're going to have to wait and see what these are coming up. And the beans in this row that are coming up are kidney beans. And in my last bed here, with this was going to be a no trellis bed, but I still had more plants that I had to plant out. I, I actually don't remember what any of these are. Uh, Those, these ones might actually be my Florida dad. We're going to, we're going to be able to tell when they start setting off fruit. These ones over here, I see a tag. I do have a tag for this one. Oh, my Mexican midget. Yeah, these are Mexican, Mexican midget. This might also be a Mexican midget. No idea what those ones are. No idea what those ones are. But what I do know is all of these are Roma up to here. Then over here I have four purple tomatillos and two green tomatillos. Doesn't look like that green one's going to survive, but we'll see. And then you can also see in this one that there are four, the four channels. Now you'll see here that I don't have that one hooked up because I ran out of these T connectors, so I have to order more. So this one is run for four, but it's not actually hooked up for four, so I have to order some more T connections from Haas. And then the beans that are coming up here are navy beans, and it looks like there's only one navy bean coming up currently. And then the last part of my garden tour here, I have four tires that I, I'm using as containers. And they are being used for things that like to take over, like lemon balm and mint. This is a peppermint, two peppermints that I started from seed. 
They're not doing super hot, but they're living. Uh, I have to water them more, I believe. I just watered them last night. And then this one is a strawberry mint, which is doing a lot better than the peppermint. And then this last one is a chocolate mint that I bought that is doing excellent. But I thought it would be fun. We had all these tires laying around that the previous owners left. And I thought it would be useful to help try to control these invasive plants that we have here. Now around the edge here, we do have some things growing. I don't know if you guys can see that, but those are sunflowers coming up here. These are black oil sunflowers. I have them scattered all along this fence line. So this fence line will be sunflowers. And then, let me see, can you see? Mm, there's a black hollyhock in there. The glare is something real. But I did plant some purposeful things here. There's some red dye amaranth here. Uh, and then there's lots of plants of yarrow scattered all along this row. There's more amaranth. There's fennel. Um, and I think that's all that's along this fence line currently. Well, that ended up being short-lived, which I kind of had a feeling was going to happen, but I was able to get some things planted that I wanted. I got this whole area planted, this new garden, this whole new garden that I made uh, is now planted with various cucumbers and squash. Uh, so I still need to come out with the straw and cover everything, but I got it in the ground and now I need to water it. And then I also was able to plant the runner beans um, in my three circles squares and I actually did not have enough seeds of my runner beans to put one at every corn that I had. But again, I, this was kind of a spur of the moment decision to make the three sisters gardens and <clears throat> it just kind of is what it is this year. But I did get, I'm, I'm going to do one complete uh, three sisters garden. So one of the ones of four also has four runner beans on it and so we'll hopefully see how that all works out uh, as a three sisters garden when it all gets going. Uh, but now it is all, now dinner time and I need to get this stuff watered and everything else will just have to wait until tomorrow. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you guys for stopping by today and joining in on our journey here at Bourbon's Living. We'll catch you on the next one.